Rochelle and Rihanna, thank you for talking to us today. Rochelle, we'll start with you. Tell me how you are feeling to finally get this decision changed from accidental to undetermined. Well, it's been a long nine year fight. Um, I feel like, like someone has actually heard a little bit of what, heard our story, heard Haven's story. Um, I feel like it's taken way too long for to get this far. Um, I feel like it could have, there could have been more said, there could have been more done. Um, this is just a small victory. This is a small victory in the fight that we as a family have for Haven. It is um, little steps. You know, I don't expect a whole lot. I never came into this expecting a whole lot from our system. We all know that our government is broken. Our system does not work for us. And I've encountered many roadblocks throughout the nine years that I have come, um, that we have come through this far. So I didn't come in expecting a whole lot. But I did want the uh, manner of death change to undetermined because it does leave that open. So that's what I want, wanted coming out into this and that's what I got. So I am happy for that because a small victory is a big victory. It just proves that what we were saying as a family about my son Haven, where well, there's truth behind it. Rihanna, with this now changed to undetermined, what happens next? So immediately following the jury uh, decision, this goes to the office of the coroner and it gets uh, sent out any determinations and any recommendations, which in this case, there were none. Um, and they get, uh, they get to, um, yeah, in this case, there were no determina uh, no recommendations made, but the manner of the death was changed. And so this does change the final investigation um, findings from both the autopsy and the uh, police. Um, however, this is still in the hands of the police to investigate. Um, if new information comes forward or if uh, new um, tips are are given to police, um, then it is up to them to to investigate further. Um, yeah. But there is no liability that follows from this, unfortunately. Rihanna, you and the family had some serious concerns on how the inquest turned out, more specifically with the amount of key witnesses who attended. Uh, briefly explain what happened there. There were a number of witnesses for in total who were not able to be served with their uh, summons to attend as witnesses. Uh, one in particular um, had some very key information and the family has always maintained that something happened to Haven. Um, for a young boy to die suddenly um, it's just too suspicious. Um, and one of the main issues that we had is how long this coroner's inquest took uh, to be held. Nine years after a death is simply too long. Um, and that was one of the issues with getting information from witnesses and getting witnesses to attend. Yeah, and on day two, Rochelle, you also walked out of the inquest upset by what was said by a doctor who spoke. Can you briefly explain what happened there? Well, I've always maintained that there was marks that were never documented in the coroner's report, and I've always said that. And so I seen a, a doctor backing up their reports and still basically calling me a liar, that there was no mark on his face, that there was no marks on his arms. You know, I know what I seen that day, and I was upset that um, these marks were still not being documented or being acknowledged. And I've been saying these things for nine years, that there wasn't something, it wasn't an accidental death. And, you know, um, a lot of the things that I was saying was just being um, pushed aside for so many years and they're still being pushed aside. 
Um, there was a lot of things that could have been said throughout the process, but again, this is a one-sided system where we weren't allowed to bring forward other evidence regarding the case, regarding how the police investigated my son's death or the, the lack of investigation. You know, so um, I still want to put out um, you know, for people to come forward who have information about my son, because there are missing pieces there, there still are. Um, and, you know, I know that there have been other cases in the city of Regina in the 2015, like the Nadine Machiskinik case. There's other cases where our people whose sudden deaths were pointed towards accidental. Well, yeah. this is two key cases in the 2015, so there's got to be more. Like, there can't. That whole system in 2015 in Regina, the city police, was not working for us. It was not working for Indigenous people, um, and there was way too many accidental deaths in Regina, specifically. So it's not just happening in Thunder Bay. It's yep. not just happening up north. It's happening here in Regina, Saskatchewan as well. Yep. And I think that um, people need to step, come forward, step up you know, make a stand against the police and bring our, our stories forward. Michelle Dubois and Rianne Worm, Rihanna Worm, we'll have to leave it there and we'll be sure to bring more updates to our viewers, but I thank you both uh, so much for talking to us today. Thank, thank you. you.